This Justin from the future. Dick Dynamo was the premier test pilot for the USAF. On the mission in the new experimental AS-400 rocket, a malfunction occurred, thrusting him into a tear in the fabric of time and space. It was there that he acquired knowledge of the fifth dimensional arts. And now, with his computational briefcase possessing powers far beyond those of mere mortal briefcases, he is... Dick Dynamo, the fifth dimensional man! Petunia! Yes, Mayor White. I need you to set out my speech for the ribbon cutting this afternoon. Yes, sir. To pick up my pinstripe suit over at the cleaners right. and spit shine my shoes the way I like it. Okay. And Johnson over in accounting still needs that report. Okay. Petunia. Yes, sir. What have I told you about those loafers? Remember, high heels and a low cut blouse make the secretary. Oh, yes, sir. Don't forget to pick out my dinner. Right. Something not too heavy on the starches. Right. I have to keep my merrily figure for the ladies' luncheon next week. Yes, sir. I've been wanting to try the new wholesome food store down the street. Sure, sure. And when you get back here, we'll work on your golf swing. Oh, and Pat, does this look infected to you? Pat? Petunia? The name is Dick Dynamo, the fifth dimensional man. I'm a cosmic troubleshooter. I hunt down trouble and I shoot it in the face. It was a hot, muggy Wednesday afternoon, the kind you want to spend inside the office making love to a fine Venusian bourbon straight from Neptune. I had just polished off the fifth bottle when the briefcase lit up and told me there was an incoming message. There's a call, Quint. Come in, Dick Dynamo. Come in. Please, I need your help. Ah, Mayor White. I attended the ribbon cutting at the orphan detention facility last week. And I must say, I've heard more eloquent speeches. And I hadn't seen you dressed that badly since press caught you in the harlot house. Cut the comedy, you lousy sap. This is a matter of intergalactical security. My secretary has gone missing. Petunia? That blonde bombshell? She had legs like a sultry space giraffe. Mmm, space giraffes. Now listen up, Dick. She's been missing since last Tuesday. Yeah? What do you know about it? She was heading to accounting, the cleaners, and then to the health food store. Hmm, health food store. Why was she going to a place like that? Only communists and hoolums frequent those dives. Now there's a likely place to begin my investigation. Those baby-eating pinkos can smell a quint coming from a mile off. Mayor, do I look like a rube to you? I do more than travel through five dimensions. I'm a master of disguise! Hey, Dads, who is this? How did you get on my private line? Mayor, it's me, Dick Donimo. Or, should I say Daisy Donimo? Well, if that doesn't beat all... <laughs> well, it looked like the Quint had a case. I put on my Sunday best and made it to the store in ten minutes flat. I was just passing by your fine establishment, and I thought I would come in to look at your not-meat products. Observation, it appears you need shaving products. 
Oh my, oh dear, no, 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 no. My husband enjoys the stubble. Uh, never mind me, I'll just find my way around. That was a close one. I quickly darted down a side aisle, away from this strangely alluring metallic man, keeping my eyes peeled for anything suspicious. But how does one spot something unusual in a store full of every fruitcake and rejected dame that mankind has ever produced? I wandered toward the fruits and vegetables section, finally stopping before a bin of small, hard yellow bananas called plantons, when suddenly... I quickly dove underneath a produce stand as the metal men passed by. One more second, Dick Dynamo, and you would have been singing in the rain. Permanently. But then, I noticed I wasn't alone. Oh, good gracious! Oh my, I didn't notice you under here, darling. But no, I'm hiding here. It's not big enough for two women. You have to leave right now. Get out of here. Ow! Oh. Calm down, doll. I looked into her deep blue eyes. I don't know what it was. Maybe the pouty look or the sudden blush in her cheeks. But my eyes slowly caressed her face down to her plump lips and then... Oh my, I didn't realize that you were Dick Dynamo, the fifth dimensional man, also known as Quint. That must be your computational briefcase. Well, it looks like you've got my number, sweetheart, but what about you? Why are you hiding that pretty face back here behind a bunch of produce at this establishment? My name is Tess. I'm here looking for my missing- How about you bite your lip and tell me what you know about Petunia O'Malley? What? Who? Who are you talking about? Calm down! You want to blow our cover? Sorry, you're right. I- I don't know what came over me. I- uh, Okay. I came here looking for a missing person, but it looks like I found nothing more than a hysterical dame. Forget your purse, honey knockers. Let's both of us get out of here so I can slip into something more comfortable, like pants. Alright Tess, keep your cool and walk in front of me. I'm just going to grab a few items to make this look legit. Greetings again, awkward female. Did you enjoy your shopping activity? Oh my yes, wonderful place you have here. I've decided to purchase these items. Excellent. Let me view your selections. One unit of spinach. Oh, wow! You must have your leafy greens! One unit of tofu. I do love Mexican food! And one unit of sterile pads. Oh, mom. They're for my wife! My angel that has wings! Here is your change, ma'am. The cashier handed me back my change. Something didn't add up. Two, three, excuse me, sir. It looks like you gave me slightly too much change. Here, let me give you some back. What happened? A Dick Dynamo special. That's what happened. Alert, alert, manager to register one. Alert, alert, Delta five. Please repeat last page. Delta 5, lockdown mode, launch sequence initiated. Oh no, all the doors have closed and everyone's trapped inside. What are we going to do? My god, the whole place is shaking. Wait a second, this is a giant spaceship! Tess, cling to my chest, we're taking off! for more thrilling adventures of Dick Dynamo, the fifth dimensional man. This Just In From The Future is brought to you by Asbestamax Cola. Asbestamax, a sure cure for melancholy. Just ask Gay LaFay, the bright young Hollywood starlet in Paradigm's new picture, Gay on Broadway. I just love that new Asbestamax. 
And here's a tip to you gals, it also starches clothes. And now back to the adventures of Dick Dynamo, the fifth dimensional man. Been traveling for days. Feels like a dream. This window is the only thing linking me to the outside world. The stars are so beautiful, Quint. I think I see something coming towards the ship. Move. Please, Dick, just one moment longer. Oh, wait a minute. Aren't you Tess, the third dimensional woman? Oh, sorry. No, here, let me see your computational purse. Hello, purse. Come in, purse. Hmm? I guess not. I'll let you have the window. It's okay, Tess. Some people just can't comprehend stars, science, and stuff moving closer together. It feels like the ship is slowing down. What can you see? I do think I see something. Five, four, hold on to something. Ow! I sprained both my ankles! The doors are sliding open. Quick, Tess. Get in front of me. It hurts to stand. My foot is swelling and I can't turn it straight. Oh, Dick, I'm so scared. Don't be afraid. I've been tortured by Kazonians from Alpha Centauri 7. These Rigelians don't scare me. Rigelians? Of course they are. I could tell when the cashier couldn't count my change. Everyone knows that Rigelians can't count change. On your feet, Tess. Congratulations, shoppers! Welcome to Rigel 8. You are all our 100th customer. As a token of our appreciation, you have won a free timeshare. Just step outside to claim your prize. Tess, don't believe him. It's a trap. Quickly now, step outside and get in line. The first ten will get a free Teflon-coated cooking set. Everyone's leaving. Rigelians aren't known for their generosity with housewares. If only I knew what they were up to. Ah, you two are just who we've been waiting for. You've been selected to win our bagless vacuum cleaners from the future. I want to hit this car! What? Stay here. What? What car? She tore away from me like a wolf gnawing her way out of a bear trap. And she didn't even leave a fruit basket. Alright, you fooled her, but I'm not budging. Alright, Meat Apple. If you aren't coming out, we're coming in. To make you come out. Come on in and get me, giant robot men. It'll take more than your eight arms, glowing eyes, and firm balance to stop the Quint. Come on down the Fist City. Population you. Halt, brethren! The Overlord wants this one alive! You'll never take me! Hey, I know he's wearing a dress, but isn't that Dick Dynamo? Ah, uh, yes. Quint, the fourth dimensional man. That's the fifth. Oh. Wake up, my little fleshling. I found myself on a large plate, decked out in a tinfoil suit and drenched in a sweet, succulent butter sauce. Around me, dozens of cherry tomatoes floated like large buoys in a sea of leafy greens. Robots scampered among the hills of green roughage, carrying croutons the size of cinder blocks. Looks like I'm dressed for dinner. Who's hosting this shindig? Up here, my little minuscule morsel. My eyes scan upward to the monocular gaze of a corpulent, sixty-foot-tall alien. He was seated in a gigantic pleather lounge chair, smoking a cigarette the size of the Washington Monument. The monster's massive orange belly heaved as his labored breathing engulfed me in a cacophony of sound. I am the Rigelian's overlord. 
You may address me as the Overlord. My army of robot drones assist me in running a chain of gourmet restaurants. I use wholesome food stores to lure in my main ingredients. But you, man bacon, are a rare delicacy. You shall become my fifth dimensional feast. Well, that's a real honor, Tubby. You may call me the Quint. Would you mind honoring a condemned man's last request before dinner? Of course. I'd love a flavorful, freshly packed tar mine cigarette. Ah, of course. The fresh curiosity of cigarettes will only enhance your flavor. Mmm, tasty. Tar mine tasty. So, why oh. kidnap people out of health food stores? Why not? No one in the galaxy would miss a vegetarian, and their herbal flavor is irresistible. Ah, uh, you clever bastard. Well, I believe this is enough chit chat. Now you will be taken to be tenderized. You look a little tough. Tough as nails. But I haven't finished the cigarette. Maybe you should give it a try. <laughs> Extra fresh tires created massive venacity in my one gigantic bulbous eye! I can't see! This was my chance. I leapt through the door like a wino at the sound of falling change. I found myself in a gargantuan dining hall with tables of feasting aliens. Each table was being served by flying pods, not unlike giant salad bowls. The pods streamed in from slots in the walls and delivered their limp-wristed, iron-deficient human cargo to the waiting plates of hungry gourmands. Their toothy maws echoed with the screams of helpless victims. Hey, Quinn! Hey, Petunia! Are those new pants? That Petunia sure is a doll. I tailed the giant busboy as he headed for the swinging doors at the back of the dining hall. Before my eyes was a city skyline of huge countertops. Steam from cooking pots wafted above me like a San Fran fog. Towering ice boxes dwarfed gigantic serving carts which were laden with salt shakers the size of ocean liners and lettuce that looked like moons. I spotted another door at the back of the room and made a dash for it. Hold on! I haven't met a door yet that my briefcase couldn't crack. Let's see here. My vision was obscured by drizzling gravy from an overhead sprinkler system. I had to find her. Quint! You! I tenderly wiped the gravy from her face. Her eyes fluttered as she tried to look up at me. Delicious. Stop the presses! Who's this little guy holding onto your leg? Mommy, is that my daddy? Calm down, kid! You're hysterical! Here, have a tar mine cigarette. The cigarette of choice for millions of true-blooded Americans. Dick, I've, I've been meaning to tell you. Who's this little scamp? Is he your nephew? No, Dick, he's my son. Your cousin? No, my son. Your second aunt's nephew? No, oh, never mind. You came to save us. Wait a minute. Good gravy! Is that your son? Are you a single mother? How do you sleep at night? It's all true. I went to the health food store to find my missing son, and now I found him. But now that you're here, we can- Babe, there is no we in Unwed. I'm sorry, it's over. There's just no place on Earth for people like you. I know I've made terrible mistakes by my wretched, dirty past of immorality and my son's silly birth, 
But in our short time together, I saw past that stony edifice you show to the world, and I saw Dick, a man who strives for the greater good, a man I want to stand by, a man of strength I can cling to who understands that my past is the past. We can become shining examples of tolerance and selfless love to the future. Please, Dick, please. Maybe you can give us a second chance. I, I'm not good at speeches, just kiss me. You know, maybe, just maybe. Mommy, why do you just live like all the other daddies? Why? Guess that was a dead end. My plan now involved hijacking one of the last salad bowl spaceships and making it to sweet, meaty freedom. But the refugees from the cage were circling the pod like a pack of rabid baboons. Baboons with gravy. And there was only room for one. As I was surveying the situation, one of the savages challenged me. Hey, um, Quint, I was just wondering if you knew how we could open the plastic wrap to load the ship and maybe find a way off this place. That's when I knew the volcano of Mount St. Pandemonium was about to erupt. I'd have to act fast. Could you please take my baby? Sure. If you take one of these... She tossed the baby in the air. I snatched it by the leg and whirled it above my head like a medieval knight, charging into battle. Oh my god, what's he doing with that baby? I puffed up my cheeks like the mighty beta fish and girded my loins for battle. I whipped the baby into an onrusher's head like David to Goliath. They were all over me now, so I delivered an elbow to the teeth of the lady behind me, then crushed in the knee of the one before me. The animals fought like the devil incarnate. The foul demons piled upon me like a reeking tide of guava nectar. I sank to my knees under their crushing weight. Please, for the love of God, calm down! We're all in this together! Like hell we are! Tapping into my innermost well of man strength, I burst from the pack, tossing my assailants into the air. A battle cry erupted from my throat. My Aztec blood poured forth the energy of a thousand western races. Grabbing a prosthetic leg, I hefted it above my head like a morbid trophy and brought it down on its owner's head. The sickening thump fueled my righteous anger as I laid into my enemy anew. The door to the pod was before me, but between us was two elderly furies. Excuse me, young man! I seized their hairpin hats and clapped their heads together like waves upon the rocky shores. I kicked the lifeless carcasses aside to make way for the hatch door to the craft. I opened it and dove inside. Briefcase. Do a systems check. Those poor souls outside. If only... I could have gotten to them before it was too late. Dick, anti-gravity enabled. Capacity of 200 not exceeded. Adjusting oxygen levels accordingly. Saran seal fresh locked. Left headlight partially obscured by carbon residue and calcium shards. Operational yet not optimum. Well. We surely can't escape from doom with dirty headlights, can we? Door is now clear. Okay, I'll just take this and ah, uh, spotless. Door is now closed. I utilized a barrel-sized olive as a seat and settled into the squishy pimento. Long story short, that's how I solved the case. Well, thank you very much, Quint. You saved the day. And, uh, thanks for the casserole. It's mighty tasty. But, um, whatever happened to my secretary, Petunia? Well, I found her. But let's just put it this way. She made dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
All the important stuff is done by John Baker, Grant Cottrell, Elton Calger, David Daniels, Anthony Myers, and the woman is J.C. Dalton. Special thanks to Ginger Jones, Janelle Cottrell, Casey Baker, Parker Baker, and a nice try, Rob Paris. Maybe next time. Check out more Dick Dynamo at dickdynamo.com and on MySpace.